So Eric Bowling, the former Fox News host and current Newsmax host, he um, decided to get really, really angry at the Muppets because the Muppets dared to say, hey, you know, Big Bird got vaccinated, so Big Bird is now protected from COVID. Isn't that wonderful? Hooray! And he took uh, issue with this. <laughs> Take a look at the video. COVID, there was a ton of pushback to the Biden mandates over the weekend. Big Bird is now hawking the jab for five-year-olds on Sesame Street. And I've scheduled an appointment for my grandson. We're leaving in a few minutes. Okay. Now, I just need to get one last thing before we go to your appointment, Big Bird. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. All right. And look what I have here is what we needed for Aww. your vaccine Aww. shot. Aww. Radar. Teddy bear. Aww. Aww. Yes, it's time to go, Big Bird. Aww. Good luck, Big Bird. We're rooting for you. You're going to do the. great, Big Bird. We'll see you when you get CNN. back. CNN. I told you 15 years ago, Sesame Street, are a bunch of communists, and they're proving it <laughs> once again. I stand by that assessment. By the way, there's a longer version of that video on Mediaite, and um, he is such a parody of himself, Eric Bowling. So he goes on. He calls Kermit, quote, that cute little green monster commie. You know, he gets mad at uh, Big Bird getting vaccinated. He says it's, you know, it's outrageous that they're propagandizing our children. Um, and then he brings up a story from a decade ago that he recalls fondly of when he was on Fox News. He got into a feud with the Muppets back then, too. And back then, it was over the fact that um, Sesame Street had, in one way or another, called out some oil baron who was shutting down a company and, you know, jobs were being destroyed. And so the Sesame Street did a thing where they more or less called that uh, oil baron out and they used his name or whatever. And of course, Eric Bowling comes rushing to the defense of an oligarch. And uh, this is where this is where we're at, guys. I mean, we've seen this nonstop for the past how many months you have the right obsessing over um, Dr. Seuss was one of them. There was a lot of anger over the fact that Mr. Potato Head is now named Potato Head. Now they're uh, getting outraged over Sesame Street. And by the way, there was also a tweet where Big Bird was like, you know, I'm, I'm getting vaccinated. And uh, the right, so many prominent figures on the right were like, Argh! angry at the fictional bird. Argh! And so here's here's my thing. Like, if you are pro-vaccine but anti-mandate, that's a tenable position. There are plenty of people who take that position. But if you have, if you're just pro-vaccine, like it has nothing to do with a mandate. If you're just pro-vaccine, I don't see how you can get mad at the Big Bird vaccination thing. Because Big Bird's not forcing you to get vaccinated. He's not forcing you at all. And... We, we covered the study on the show. It was a French study of over 20 million people, and the vaccine had a 90% protection rate. So in other words, you're 90% protection from severe illness, hospitalization, and death. This is over 20 million people. It is a colossal study. It's not up in the air. It's not a question. We know that the vaccine is effective. We know that you should get it. And so given that fact... I don't understand how people can get angry at whether it's, uh, you know, a cartoon character or a, a Muppet or somebody else in polite society who's advocating for the vaccine. It, I mean, honestly, at this point, that's just being responsible. Now, by the way, I don't, if you're, if you have kids and you say, listen, I'm gonna wait for, for, uh, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or a month. I just want to see. I just want to see the results if other, you know, other people's kids get the vaccine first. I'm going to keep my eye on the news, see what's going on here. Are there going to be, you know, a large percentage of them with adverse reactions? I'm just looking out for my kids. I want to do what's best. I get it. I get it. I get it. But the fact of the matter is it did get through the studies. It got through the trials. Uh, the, the results were successful. So you can't begrudge people for, number one, uh, agreeing to get the kids vaccinated right now. And number two, saying, hey, by the way, it's a good idea. I mean, what do you expect society to do? Go in this direction and then pretend like, oh, no, it's a terrible idea. Now, of course, they're going to say it's a good idea because it is a good idea. So, again, I don't begrudge you if you're just wait. OK, let me wait and see how, uh, you know, the kids do. And then I'll, I'll take my kid to go do it. Totally fine. Totally fine. And shaming that person is not going to help the situation. Shaming that person might make them more defensive, so on and so forth. So I get it. But you can you really get mad at this? 
And the answer for them is yes. And what are we not talking about? We're not talking about unions. We're not talking about higher wages. We're not talking about the strike wave. We're not talking about health care. We're not talking about foreign policy. We're not even talking about infrastructure. We're not talking about the Build Back Better proposals. And, and by the way, there's a reason why the right is not engaging on those things, because they know they're playing a losing hand. You're not going to have them. You're only the, the biggest idiots are going to come out and be like, I, I'm totally against paid family leave. I'm totally against, uh, you know, fill in the blank with whatever amazingly popular provision that was in the original Build Back Better bill. They're not taking those things head on because they know they're going to lose that debate 10 out of 10 times. Lowering drug prices, 88% of the country wants to do that. So the right is cleverly not engaging on that and just changing the conversation all to this shit. And even on this shit, they're wrong. So they want to do culture war shit all day, fight with a fictional bird all day. They're wrong on it, but that's their only focus. So it's just... It's depressing. This is where we're at. This is the state of our politics. A former Fox News host who's a current Newsmax host feels like it's necessary to fight with a fictional bird about about a vaccine that we know, as a matter of fact, is 90 percent effective. I mean, what else can you say about it? He thinks he thinks the the Muppets are communists because they're pro vaccine, which is 90 percent effective. By the way, if that makes you a communist, what percentage of the country is now communist? 70%, 75%? I think that's roughly the percentage, at least of adults who are vaccinated in the country. So are you claiming that 70 to 75% of the American people are communist? Is that, is that the claim? I don't know why they're picking this fight, but it's the saddest thing I've ever seen. And the funniest thing of all is he really thinks he's speaking truth to power. He is acting like he's speaking truth to power. I'm going to be the straight shooter. I'll call out that fictional ass bird. This is going to go well for me. All right, th- these are the people who uh, are your truth tellers. By all means, have at it. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.